Okay, in this section, I will go over some, uh, some of the fundamental elements of your uh, Algebra 2 class, kind of to refresh your, your memory a little bit and prepare you for, uh, for this class. So I'm not going to go into depth into any of the, into any of the sections. Uh, I mean, this video is not supposed to teach you something you've already gone over in previous Algebra classes. It's only supposed to be kind of a quick review to catch you up to speed. So uh, let's get started. First section uh, is called evaluating an algebraic expression. So let's say you're given an expression that looks something like this. 5x plus 3 minus 2yx. And you're supposed to use x equals 3 and y equals negative 2. Okay, so how do you do this one? Well, the only thing you do is you plug in, wherever it says x, you plug in a 3. Wherever it says y, you plug in a negative 2. So we have 5x, which is going to turn out to be 5 times 3, since x equals 3, plus 3, minus 2, and then times y, which is equal to negative 2, and then times x, x which is equal to 3. So times 3. Okay, now it's just a basic algebraic expression, and we just do use, uh, we just multiply this out, and we get to our answer. So 15 plus 3 minus 2 times negative 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. So we're going to get 2 positive 12. And this is going to equal 30. Okay. Now, something to watch out for when we're, uh, when we're evaluating expressions like this is, is when you're given uh, something that looks like this with uh, a second degree uh, equations, third degree equations, and so on. And you're supposed to use negative numbers instead of, uh, as x and y. So x equals negative 2. Let's say y is equal to negative 3. OK. So what you need to watch out for here is when you plug it in the negative 2, in here and the negative 3 in here. Okay, so 4 times negative 2 squared. Okay, we plug in x, plug in negative 2 instead of x. Okay, so there's a difference between doing this and doing this. Okay, those are two completely different equations. Okay, now negative 2 squared and negative 2 in parentheses squared equals two different things. Negative 2 squared equals negative 4 and negative 2 in parentheses squared actually equals positive 4. So just remember to keep this in mind and be careful when you're uh, when you run into these types of problems. So the correct way of doing it is like this with the parentheses. And Always use parentheses when you're when you're doing problems like this. It just makes it makes it easier um, in the long run anyway. Negative two times y, another parentheses, replace it by three, negative three, squared plus five. Okay. And now we just solve this. So we're gonna get four, negative two squared, like I mentioned, is positive four minus 2, negative 3 squared, in parentheses, equals positive 9 plus 5. Okay, we're going to get to 16 minus 18 plus 5. And that's going to give us positive 3, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, 
Next section is combining like terms. So what does that mean, combining like terms? Well, it's a pretty straightforward process where you just combine terms that contains the same type of elements. So let's say we have 4m plus 3m minus 2n minus 5m. Okay, so pretty straightforward. You can only combine like terms. So m can only be combi combined with m. Okay, so we have three m's here. Three m's to the first degree. Remember, there's a one here, but it's understood that there's a one, so it's, it's never written out. Okay, so we can only combine like terms the same degree. Okay, so four plus three minus five. Okay, so we have seven m right over here minus five m. Okay, which equals 2m. So 2m and then the negative 2n just hangs out over here. I'm oh, sorry, 2n just hangs out over here because there are no other n's in this equation. So this would be your final answer right here. Something to uh, kind of keep in mind and what, or watch out for when you're working with these type of expressions is so when you have a little more complicated problems like this one for instance minus 2 y squared x squared plus 6 uh, let's just leave that 6 out and just go x squared y squared. Okay, something to keep in mind here or kind of watch out for is expressions that look the same but they're in different orders. So this expression and that expression looks kind of similar, right? But it's in a different, but they're, you know, flipped around. They're in a different order. So what do we do about that? Well, these expressions are actually the same. So we can combine these. These are like terms. This is this is just the same as saying five times four is actually equal to four times five, right? It's the same thing. They both equal twenty. X squared times y is the same as saying y times x squared. So in whatever order they are, the most important thing is that the variable is in the same degree to the power of the same thing, so to speak. That's the most important thing, or that is the important thing to keep in mind. So we have three x squared y's plus five y x squared, okay? So three of these and five of these, which means eight in total. And it doesn't matter if I write x squared first or y first. Then we look at these two. Well, we have the same type of problem here. The y's are before the x's and the other way around here. Well, like I said, these two are exactly the same. It doesn't matter in what order they're written, as long as they're multiplied together. So we have negative two of these, and how many of these do we have? Well, there's actually one here, right? It's not stated because it's already understood. So negative two of these plus one of these is going to equal negative one of those. And like I said, the negative one is never written out, so this would be your final answer.